You know, it's wonderful to build something brand new and it's wonderful to preserve something. But actually, the most exciting thing is to take something old and something new and do something together. To me, that is the most innovative, the most creative, and also has the most connection to history and also is pushing towards the future. This is extraordinary. This is one of the most beautiful museums and the greatest collections I've ever seen. All in such an unexpected place. We are the only accredited art museum in the country that was formerly a brewery. We well, have to imagine our site in 1884 because it actually was a wood structure. And then by the 1890s, that's when you see the beginning of the building of this extraordinary campus. So for Adolphus Bush making a bet on San Antonio where you had this incredible water supply, you know, having that water source was critically important. He made a big bet that San Antonio would prove to be a great place for his industry, and he was absolutely right. He brings in the architects that he had worked with out of St. Louis. So it's Jungenfeld and company, and then the local architects were Warrenberger and Beckman. We have to picture just how a kind of bustling mini city that the Lone Star Brewery was in its heyday from you know the 1890s through till really only just about 1918, which is shortly before Prohibition. What happens is that the campus, this extraordinary campus with all these extraordinary outbuildings along the river, just fall into disuse and disrepair. We were a variety of different businesses that took place on the campus and then just not being used at all. One of the last directors of the San Antonio Museum Association, a guy named Jack McGregor, he was looking for a place to live. And he came down to the campus and he brought with him his big patron and her name was Nancy Nagley. And so they walked to this lovely little building which is called the Hops House, they turned around and looked back and saw all these parapets and the crenellated roofs and five stories. And they said, why don't we make this a museum? It took visionaries to recognize that there was potential in this. It was not a time when resources were just plentiful but people really wanted to have it happen. I broke a bottle of beer. <laughs> because of the history of the museum, having brewing activities, having taken place in those buildings. We were very interested in the project because of the museum work. And working with the Cambridge Seven, the architects from, from Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, was a, sort of an education in itself. Having a resource like the Cambridge Seven, who had this national, international experience and exposure, brought a lot of depth of knowledge and resources to the project. Great architecture is spectacular to build. It's part of what the beauty of being in the construction business is. You take something that's broken and worn down and looks old and you turn it into something that no one could ever believe was possible. I think there was a lot of pride in what was accomplished by everybody and really that this was done in two years was amazing. Everybody was here and it was huge and it was such a celebration because there hadn't really been this quality of construction and design in San Antonio for many years and it, it just was a, a very pivotal moment for the city and the future of San Antonio. What makes us unique is that adaptive reuse piece. This is a 
an area that we really pioneered. SAMA has been a leader in showcasing to the city and to the state and, and actually to the rest of the world about what high quality adaptive reuse really is. Overland has, has been blessed with some great projects, but this project is special. The Latin American Art Center is made to look older, but is a newer part of the complex. When we were given a gift of about 3,000 works of Asian art, primarily Chinese ceramics by Lenora and Walter Brown, it came with a new building, and that's where Overland Partners builds a contemporary structure that is purpose-built for art and for that particular collection, and it looks like it's sort of set in on top, and it's quite clearly not part of the original structure. How do we extend people's stay, their desire to stay in a museum? If we can get people to pause from time to time, from looking at the art, to look out to nature, it changes the iris, okay? It opens it up more. By doing this, it allows the eye to be restored. So what we've done throughout all the projects that we do is constantly introduce natural light. You can sort of regain some energy and then continue on. It didn't turn into the area it is right now until the city and county decided to improve the river walk. And uh, thanks to Lila Cockrell, barges were also planned and the locks were put in. That was her idea to have tourists. We have the best location, the best geography in the city. We're right on the river. We're connected north to south. We've had explosive growth all around us. It is about community revitalization, and so we're very proud of the role that we play in that. There's been a lot of activity, and I think the museum finds itself right now right sort of in the heart. It's really an ideal place, I think, for the future of the museum. The thing I learned the most was what great architecture can do for a, a, a person, a city, or the world. It's all encompassing. We wanted to share the things that we've done here with the rest of the world, but the world is coming here to look at San Antonio. They really realize that San Antonio is a unique city and has a unique gift to share with the world. And this museum is one of those great unique gifts. We are so lucky to have a beautiful San Antonio Museum of Art. And the city would not be as wonderful if we didn't have that museum.